All right, good day, guys. <clears throat> Time for some FX61. I'm going to do a uh, INAV3 test since it's got the new form firmware installed. Um, yeah, we'll um, throw it up, auto level it, auto tune it is set to uh, just your auto configuration. Shouldn't have to touch that and. Uh, then we'll do an auto tune on it and see how it goes. Hopefully, I can get it up in the air. It's a, it's a tough one to launch this one on your own, so fingers crossed. We'll see how we go. Telemetry recovered. Let's see how we go. Like I said, the hardest part with this thing is launching it, so. It's a hard plane to fly and you fly on your own this one when you hard plane to get up in the air when you're on your own. So far so good now that it's up. So it feels pretty good, so far so good, it's flying nice and straight. I'll bring it around put in a loiter and then I think we'll try and do an auto tune on it. So that's position hold it's in now, doing about a 60 metre radius I think the default set to now, 60 or 70. So I'll just keep it in um, position hold for a little bit here just to keep it testing. It seems like it's going quite well is in its position hold. Um, sped up now just to get through this little section before we start on an auto tune. So here I've just flicked uh, the craft into auto tune by one of my switches. So what you'll see here, as you notice um, at the top left, it's in acro mode. You have to do this in acro mode. And below that is the roll, pitch and level. So we just take a note of the roll and the pitch figures. Um, and basically what we do 
is you need to roll the plane and pitch the plane up and down. Um, they say up, up to around 20 times. And what you'll see while you're doing that is these figures um, adjust while it's doing its auto tune. So as I bank around here, um, you'll notice then I'll start to um, shake the plane a bit left and right, adjusting the pit, uh, adjusting the roll, and just keep an eye on the on the settings. You'll see them. You'll see that the, the uh, auto tune will adjust. Um, how aggressive you want to be, um, it's up to you. Personally, with this plane, it's a cruiser plane, so I'm not going to be doing any loops or anything like that, or any rolls. So I, I'm, I want to be fairly gentle on the on the tune itself. You can tame the amount of the tune and how it how it adjusts things um, through the CLI in iNav. But just keep going up and down. You can see the pitch altering as I go up and down, and then left and right. You'll see the roll adjustments also um, alter as well. Once you're happy with the way the the plane is flying, um, you'll notice the the figures won't change as much. Um, so then, what you do is um, you're happy with the way it's flying. You you turn off auto tune and um, basically just fly around. So you can see now I've, I've finished with my auto tune. I've turned it off. I'm back now um, into my normal modes. I, I set. Oh, I'm still flying acro though. But um, I, what I have done is I've set up a switch so that when I go into auto tune, it automatically flicks my on-screen display to show me the the PIF F values. That way I can see the auto tune working while I'm flying. And when I deactivate the auto tune. It, um, it goes back to this on-screen display you're seeing right now. So when you, when you land, you don't want to disconnect the battery. You need to save the auto-tune settings, the new settings. So what, what you'll want to do, once you're happy with the way the plane's performing, turn off the auto-tune and land it when you're ready to land it. You can disarm it, but just take it over to iNav or um, your settings through your goggles if you do it that way, and um, just save the the new settings, and it'll be good next time you boot it up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm happy with the way it's flying. It flies really nice and smooth and level. Um, I'm just going to take a bit of a range test on it here to check out the video transmission here. Um, it's very patchy in spots. I'm not too sure why you can see it breaking up here, and I'm only I'm not even two kilometers away, so it should be a lot further than that This plane runs a 1.5 system um, So it should be a, a fairly good long range. It runs a part on 1.5 system, so it's should be should be a lot better than this I've, I've, got, I've got to figure out what's going on here with its aerial or, or what's happening here so what's, that's forced me to return to home. So I'll flick the return to home switch. We need to test that anyway. Um, I'll flick that and we're around 1.7 kilometers, I think, from home point. So we're also, so right now we're on our return to home, coming back en route to home. Everything seems good here. Overall, the plane feels really nice. It's a beautiful plane to fly. Good wingspan, which makes it very stable. This plane, if anyone's looking at getting it, it's um, yeah, it's a very stable plane. So I'm just going to basically keep flying around now and just see what sort of rough flight times we can get. The only concerns I've got here, my airspeed sensor doesn't seem to be working. 
that's um, on the right hand side you can see where it says a hair it's not showing anything as we go across the little ridge here of this little mountain um, video transmission still a little bit patchy on the back side of where I am and I'm only a few hundred meters away so it's definitely an issue there we've got to address um, I've, I've switched back to angle mode so this is this is all stabilized flying now personally I think acro mode is the best mode to fly in it's very realistic but it is a good test having this patchy video just to um, yeah, flick it into return to home when you get a bit of bad video feed everything does seem to be working good in this new firmware These are lithium ion packs. This one runs a ZOHD 10,000 milliamp lithium ion battery. Um, you don't want to strain them too much. They're not very good for long, long term, high speed, high acceleration flights. So, my, uh, my experience with them, you, 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 on takeoff, um, is, is it puts a main strain on it so once you're up level back it off try and find your your cruise level which for me it's usually around the 50 50 percent throttle and just yeah look after your battery the more the more power you put into your battery you'll find that it sucks it down quite quick but then your battery level will alter and it will raise back up again in some cases if you're just cruising along um, using very little battery, using very little throttle. As you can see we're still at around 33% but that can go back up to 40%. There's more life in the battery than what it's um, actually showing depending on how much throttle I use. So I'm going to take it out again and do another test with range and maybe flick it back into return to home again. Uh, we're doing 70 about 70 kilometers an hour and I'm cruising along at half throttle I'm currently only a few hundred meters away from home so still fairly close but the, the, the video feed like it drops in and out like you can see gets quite annoying. This um, system I've got is just running the stock antennas that came with the Partom so I'm not sure whether that's the problem. I have heard these have a better range than this even with the stock antennas so so I'm not too sure whether that's the problem. I think that it should give me more range than what it is without the breakup. You can see the altitude stays fairly level. I've um I've actually set up this plane too so that when it's in angle mode or if you have horizon mode you can do the same but I don't have horizon mode set on this plane but for angle mode I have it set so when I flick it to angle mode auto level automatically comes on as well so it's leveling while it's flying in the angle mode and it does it seems to work pretty good. I'm gaining altitude at the moment. We're going to go out a little way and just test the range at a bit higher altitude here. You'll see our battery now is showing only 24%. I'm still not too concerned about that. I've got, I know I've got plenty of juice in it. We're at half throttle and the video feed now is starting to get choppy. Around 1.5 around 1 kilometers, which isn't very far. So 
we get out to 1.7 kilometers it's 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 viewable but then it just drops out and it's just not worth risking so test the return to home once again before we bring it back So now we're back, it's um, reached its home point and it starts loitering again um, around the home point. I think the loiter radius is 60 or 70 metres, which can be adjusted to through INAV, but uh, it's quite it's set quite good, the default is. This is all default, so it's set quite good with its radius for this plane as it's got a 1.5 metre wingspan, so it's not a small plane. So overall the, the flight's pretty good. 21 kilometers in distance we've flown on this battery. So we'll start to, we'll come in now and we'll um, bring it in. We'll bring it in for a landing. I feel we've still got quite a bit of battery power even though it's only showing 20 27 percent 30 per 30 percent it, it goes up quite quite a bit so bring in for a landing now and um, we'll just review what's left So here's some of the stats from the flight. You can see the max speed, 108 kilometers an hour we reached. Uh, max distance, 1.74 kilometers. That was before I hit return to home. Um, distance traveled, we did a total flight time in that of 22.79 kilometers with a max altitude at 213 meters. And minimum RSSI is interesting at 9%. I'm not sure why that's so low. Um, what I could think of is where um, where I hit the return to home, below me there was a lot of road work so they could be using their radios that could be interfering possibly there. Uh, flight time 20 minutes and um, yeah that's basically it, disarmed with the switch. So there you go, that was a 20k flight actually, I did, I did on that. Um, ventured out a little bit. My um, video range wasn't the greatest for a 1.5 but I think it may have something to do with this because it landed and this was down. So it's possible. But anyway. Okay, it's done its auto-tune. So now what I've got to do is save it in iNav and then that's um, that should configure the, um, the PIDs to the auto-tune. All right, so I'm in a iNav here. I've got the FX61. Uh, like I said, when you do the auto-tune, don't turn it off, don't unplug it. You can disarm, but don't un don't unplug the battery because you've got to bring it over into iNav now or you've got to save it. So basically, you can either do it in iNav, that's how I do it, or you can do it through your goggles and through the um, transmitter if you want to do it that way too. But I'm doing it through iNav. I prefer it this way. So what we'll do, we'll connect. Um, and what we'll do, we'll go through... So we have to go into our outputs tab first. We'll check out that because we had um, we had the continuous servo auto trim on. Um, we should have a different set of 
uh, midpoints now when we go and check our servos. So we'll have a look at that. We scroll down. Yeah, you'll see my midpoints now for my servos, my th channel three and channel four, they're different. So it's automatically detected um, new midpoints and saved them there it has. So that automatically um, saves. So what we wanna do, we'll go to the PIDs and let's just see what's been done here. All right, so we've got a few new changes here with our roll and pitch, our, pro, our P, PI and FF, not so, not the derivative. We don't have to worry about that with the planes, but uh, the, the proportional integral, um, they've that's the new settings now from the from the auto tune. Okay, so all we have to do now just to save that, and we can unplug the battery. And that's it, we're good to go. So they'll be the same uh, PID gains or PIFF gains when we um, boot it up next time. So there you go guys, hope you enjoyed that. Bit of a long video, but yeah, that's my um, maiden basically of iNav 3.0 on the FX61, come out pretty good. And I'm very happy with the way it flies. Until then guys, um, keep flying, stay safe, and bye for now.